Hello folks, Beano Black, and basically we're going to look at a little bit of truth here and the idea that everybody litters. So it doesn't really matter what country, nation, whatever, company, this, that, and us for. So we're looking out in space here. Basically blue is trash, big mistake. Satellites banged into each other and basically this happened whenever. It doesn't really even matter when it happened. Uh, these are the names, Iridium 33 and Cosmos 2251 collision, okay? It's not constellations, it's not space objects. I mean, it's they are space objects, but they're space trash. So, basically, man, it's pretty good at making mistakes. But otherwise, we got everything under control pretty good out there when you think about how many satellites are really up in the sky and then the idea that you'll get a little bit of an idea, and this is just uh, anything that's not blue is just the satellites that were grouped in with uh, this so-called number here and basically you don't want to mess with the devil because basically the devil will get you and the devil keeps our I guess I don't know people talk crap politicians from nations and so forth and so on so the idea that numbers don't mean nothing you never trust a number but the idea that it does not matter Earth has got eyes on it all the time, whether God is watching or whether human beings are watching. There's always something watching something. Look at that. And that's just the ones that are listed. And the blue ones are trash. That's particles that whammed into each other out there and stuff like that. And the rest of them is like... There's a lot of satellites up there, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of stuff up in space. And then that's why they only go so high, because the idea that you get farther out there and then there's... Uh, whatever you want to call nature of space out there, objects in space. What is, whenever, when any, somebody says UFO, they're usually you are effed over, and then basically, but there is UFO as far as objects of space, actual uh, materials of space, just like if you're mining, there are certain ores out there in space, magnets, uh, electrical uh, magnification. Uh, humongous motors. I mean, we go in circles. We rotate around the sun. We rotate. Planets rotate. Uh, electrical energy, light propagation from space. So enough said there. Just a little bit of you know trash out in space that needs to be recycled. Uh, we need to turn those space shuttles back into garbage uh, trucks. Go up there and I mean, we spent so much money on them. We might as well just keep them burning and get up there and clean up all the crap. Because, I don't know, I guess they just figured everything would just come down and it'll burn up in space all the time, and then that's good for our aurora. Well, anything punching holes in the aurora all the time is just not really a good thing. You drill holes, drill holes in a piece of anything, and eventually it loses its structure. So anyway, that's something for all the mad scientists and, and uh, scientists that ain't got enough balls to speak up and say something. So anyway... Anything piercing our atmosphere, once we put it up there, it'd be better off just to go up there and collect it and keep it on a big old trash bin up there somewhere instead of having it scattered all over the place. All those blue dots are garbage. Okay, it burns up, comes through the atmosphere, and every time something punctures the atmosphere, whether going in or going out, it ain't good, it ain't healthy. Later. Well, not later. Let's go look what else we can dig up today about truth. This is the latest generation of uh, what's going on with uh, air, jet stream. Basically, what I was trying to show from uh, looking at, uh, and you basically can go to the internet's websites. That there's a very good weather one that uh, a lot of the Dutch sense people go to. They go to a lot of different ones. They don't just trust one. It's like sifting through the news real good. The idea that you don't trust one news agency. So you get this action that goes over to uh, the Russian F up a long time ago, and then you got the other F ups over here, uh, Fuka Fudge up. And then this tests out in the Pacific over the years and stuff like that. But, you know, man had to learn how to harness. But then they get stupid and think they got it harnessed and put it in the most dangerous areas in the world that you could possibly imagine, the ring of fire. So we go to basically knowing that basically it propagates to each other, okay? So it propagates through all the tests and the jet stream. Then it comes down through this other testing areas down here. And you are looking at the United States of America there. We know all the tests out here to win World War II and so forth and so on. Get big tools, go big bang. Uh, then we uh, go up through here, and this is the jet stream. So it's basically, this is the latest, and I'll pop it down so you do realize that pretty much this is the latest. Uh, and basically, it's bang, bang, back and forth, and propagation to propagation. It's like sex. 
uh, bling bling your eyes, you see something cute, uh, male or female. I'm talking genre, so if there's any lady scientists in the room or anything like that, bang bang, you see something you like, bang bang, attraction. And then we know that uh, CPM rads attract, they like metal, they like going back to their uh, attractions where they came from, uh, i.e., space down to earth, uh, earth out to space. Uh, CPM rads to CPM rads, wherever they're at, industrial, uh, electrical production, uh, defense, x-ray machines, everything. Gigantic magnets, everything's magnetical. Uh, a magnetical circus, electrical magnification, electric electrician, pie-hole electrician, Beano Black, sharing, science, data and facts. So there's your jet streams of recent and let's pop out and give you a uh, so there's your date. Okay, this stuff pretty much can be trusted. Jet streams around the world, ladies and gentlemen. Lower and higher. Okay. And what you see here is vacuum. Okay. This is vacuum. We end up seeing it over here also and that's where we get those Earthquakes, this is what's doing a lot of to Vanatu and New Zealand area and Philippines, and it's just lower of, uh, we can go back up a size and we will look at that a little closer. We can go back up and we'll go to, and basically that's where you get all your earthquake activity. Below Japan, lower, ring of fire, Mother Nature and man trashing on each other. So there you get a lot of vacuum. And then it spreads as you see over here, and we end up seeing it flare up sometimes. So you're starting to get this between these two jet streams. And uh, weather modification, we know that exists. So it's interesting to pay attention to Dutch's channel and just basically a little heads up to Dutch's uh, fans and uh, people interested in uh, weather modification, weather uh, radar watching, so forth and so on, and there you go, science data and facts and bleeds together, and I hope help and not talk too much, but just showing pictures and, yep, things go on. So bang, 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 down there, Australia action, and Mother Nature also, okay, this is Mother Nature, this vacuum here, okay, and then you get uh, sometimes bam, bam, scatter, and then ricochet here from here, ricochet here, and then ricochet into the Midwest, and as you see those holes open up, you get a hole here, you get a hole there, and you get a hole. We'll get a hole here in the United States somewhere, more than likely. There's a hole up there. And we'll get a hole probably here again, and I think we'll see it again. It should generate again. It'll eventually pop up again. Oh, there's a hole out there. And then you'll get a hole probably somewhere in here eventually. And that's why you got to watch your local radar every day, and then you'll end up getting a tornado somewhere. Okay? Because this hot and cold air right here will meet together real quick, and it's not tornado season, but when you get that hot and cold air, bam, bam, you get tornadoes, okay? So this is a separation here, and then you get hot and cold. Cold is going to be to the north. Warm is going to be down here, and you also got CPM and RADS in there, mixed in there. So, and then you got whatever is going through the airwaves of any communications, control, uh, signals, we're massive humans. What a mass. What a mass of crap. But anyway, everything's cool. Uh, it's too bad we don't have more stupid people in the world. So anyway. So this is something to watch because basically once you get ricochet, you got this big one here, and then you get a small ricochet here, and then you get these skips. Okay, you get a skip there and a skip over here. And then you'll pop, and then you'll get between this hot and cold mass right there. So that gives you some action. So it starts to basically, that's actually good movement when you get something like that to go up cold, when we get this to curve up. However, if it naturally happens or accidentally happens, this is somewhat good right there because then you get non, but when we get it, that you get those little holes down there. When we get that, that's dangerous because then you get that hot and cold moving together and you're going to get you're gonna get twisters when we have weather, when the conditions are right. So it's just hot and cold real fast together. We just, it's known. I mean, y you can make a tornado. You can go to any, search the internet and search science classes, go to a university. It's something that studies uh, this and that or whatever. You can, f you can make a tornado on a little test table, folks.
okay hot and cold vacuum okay hot and cold air together and basically here's some space junk from the Chinese satellite that got blown up okay so more space junk we got a lot of junk out there now does that contribute to heating up on earth got something shiny and it's reflecting light down to earth it helps out with crap Leo ass out debris a lot of crap out there folks Space station dancing around, make sure it watches out for big shit. It's gonna whap into it sometimes. So anyway, uh, I'll show you what basically some stuff looks like when it blows up and uh, gets blown up in space. It's man-made, and it'll make you freak out when you look at stuff on Worldwide Telescope while you're out in space because it makes you think. Uh, it's not dangerous to think. You only live once. Use your brain. So anyway, basically, I did find some pictures, even you can search around, you might find them. No matter what, when you see something that's man-made, it's blown up in space, it's like long, uh, I think I've told people before, long Lego logs, pencils, pick them up sticks, uh, it, it, uh, uh, kebab skewers, okay, and they're usually orangey, tannish, okay, so that's stuff that's actually man-made that gets blown up because the idea that it's big space junk needs to be whapped up and it kablammy they blow it up up there in space and then hopefully it re-enters our atmosphere in a very very small little bits dust hopefully Aloha Islands and basically take a little look at the flame at Kilauea there's a fresh shot the freshest that we see anyway okay so there you go from Hawaiian Volcano Observatory from USGS there you go El Flamo, go light a cigarette or anything you want. Smoke them up. Make it have a good time. The flip and flappers. Keep your lips wet too, ladies and gentlemen. And someone must have made a phone call because as you see, they they start the video way later. As we see, I'm at the beginning of the video, and you can see the cluster over to the left hand side. You can see that right there. Okay, uh, is that you see you don't get an early shot, so it'd be interesting to know what we're not seeing. So, and then you get triangulation, 3D action, because no matter what this is, more than likely could be the moon. It doesn't really matter. Any objects that are there. And we showed you, uh, oh basically I was going to show you a, a calendar yesterday. Actually, I can pull that up real fast. I got that coverage. So we'll let this play real fast, and then I'll pull you up a star map from the ye yesterday real quick. It'll be just be really easy. I'll let this play. 3D action. You all know how a projector works. You can just get a slide, a machine out. Uh, I can't help somebody that invented the uh, projectors. Okay, and... Uh, slide machines and so forth like that that you actually have a common mind idea of when you put something in front of there oh we were oral action in Hawaii ladies and gentlemen CME action in space look at those colors coming in from outer space holy electrical flipping skitter scatter along our atmosphere holy buckets and uh, clock time here uh, is that noon yep one o'clock in the afternoon here something like that there 14 now you got your clock in the upper right. So let's let's play that again. I think I'll have enough time. So the sky is beautiful. Thirteen thousand, probably five hundred feet, something like that, over in Hawaii at Observatory. Doesn't matter about being too damn. It's pretty damn close to fourteen thousand feet. And here you go. And you watch your clock up there. It's military time, but it's Hawaii standard time, I believe. So I don't think this is. G uh, I don't think they hooked in there's your aurora action what colorful what colorful I got some static kitty cat action over our atmosphere in outer space folks go scratch a cat holy scratch a rama all kinds of colors of the spectrum and it's a good thing that may than likely it's a good thing we got radii down here in our atmosphere too so the idea that it can turn into a gigantic flipping matchstick 
wild. Our atmosphere is saving.